I've been a game developer for almost a decade now, and I've been working in Unity for nearly half of that time. So over the years and over the many multitudes of client projects, tutorials, toys, and capital V video games, I've picked up a number of different products and tools to make the whole thing easier along the way. Unity is a very versatile engine, but as we all know, it sometimes lacks some of the more bespoke things that game development requires. And while I enjoy the process of learning new things, and I definitely consider myself a bit of a tools nerd, sometimes there's parts of the game development process that you're just not interested in or don't have the time or resources for. Thankfully, the Unity Asset Store exists, and there are a number of developers out there who I am very thankful for for making incredibly useful tools, extensions, and assets that myself and I'm sure many of you like to use on a daily basis. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, I've partnered with Unity to recommend a number of different assets that are available for purchase during their summer sale. And so I'm gonna walk through some of my recommendations today and how I choose to think about purchasing assets when I'm working on projects. As many of you will know, I often like to roll my own solution for things, but I'm also not opposed to spending money when I think it'll save me a ton of time and effort, especially when products are robust, versatile, or just generally a good deal. So let's jump straight in and take a look at a few of my top picks from this year's sale. Final IK. Kicking off with an absolute essential for me, Final IK is probably my asset store asset that has found its way into almost every project I've ever worked on. Final IK is an extremely robust and versatile package for pretty much anything you might want to do with inverse kinematics in your game. It's so flexible and easy to use that I absolutely adore it. Whether you need to have a character look at a specific object in your scene, mount a character's hand to an object like a gun, or perform a bunch of complex procedural bone movements, Final IK does it all. As a recent example, you can see here that I'm using Final IK in Cabs of Chaos to have my player characters look behind them when driving in reverse. The biped IK components allow me to control different weighting across my character's bones and have each bone target a specific point. As you can also see, I'm using it here to have their hands hold onto the steering wheel and move with the wheel as the player turns left or right. This is a pretty simple use case for the tool and there's tons of other things it can do. I've actually made a full tutorial about using Final IK for gameplay interactivity, so if you end up picking up this asset, Set, go ahead and give that video a watch to get some ideas for how you might use the package in your game. Amplify Bundle. Next up on the list is Amplify. Amplify Shader Editor is another one of my go-to assets. As I've mentioned, I've been using Unity long before the render pipeline existed and long before Shader Graph was a thing. So Amplify Shader Editor was added into my projects upon their very creation because I consider it such an essential tool for customizing my visuals. I'm a big fan of node-based workflows and I've always enjoyed how quickly I can jump in, hook up a few nodes and see how a material looks. Even with Shader Graph, I still find Amplify Shader Editor to be useful. It comes with a ton of sample shaders, which not only teach you the ins and outs of the tool, Cool, but, well, they're shaders, so they're ready to be used in your project. I've regularly needed a specific shader for a visual effect such as a dissolve or something, and more often than not I've managed to find it in the sample shader pack. Flat kit. If you're not super excited about working with your own shaders, but still want to achieve a stylized look for your game, then a package like FlatKit is probably just the thing you're looking for. This asset is a robust set of stylized shaders with a number of different features and styles that you can customize in order to get the ideal look for your stylized game. Generation XL is the game I'm working on at Sunderlust Studios, and you might be interested to know that the entire visual pipeline of this game is based around this shader package. So if you like the look of our game, an art style like this is entirely achievable using FlatKit. We needed something super scalable that our art director could rely on to achieve the level of fidelity he wanted without having to rely on super traditional material creation. So many of the assets in the game are made without the use of any textures and their style is purely achieved using the features included in the shader pipeline. Thanks to this, he's able to build out scenes quickly and produce assets in a much more iterative way that meet the demands of our production. There are a ton of games that use FlatKit as the base of their shaders, so check out the store page for more information on the different types of styles you can achieve using it. Node Canvas. Okay, so this one shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who has watched my channel in the past. I'm a big fan of node-based sequencing tools, and while I will frequently roll my own, I am a crazy person and do not suggest doing that yourself when there are a ton of really solid node editors on the asset store, such as Node Canvas. This tool will help you build behavior trees, dialogue systems, and state machines in ways that are much, much friendlier and often faster than if you were to just do them in code. I really can't convey my love for visual flow tools. They have saved me so, so many hours of pain over the years and allowed me to be so flexible in some of my designs. 
There's a lot of hidden value to node-based tooling that folks often don't consider when they're so used to coding everything, but the ability to very rapidly build things, tweak things, and throw them away without losing too much time is extremely useful when you're working on a game in an iterative way like I do. And sometimes you just make life easier because you can build lots of logic in mere minutes rather than multiple hours. It is much faster for me to build out dialogues, quests, and behaviors in a graph tool like this than having to sift through various JSON files or Excel spreadsheets. So I highly suggest checking this out if you're working on a game with complex systems or mechanics, especially if you have team members who want to be helpful in building gameplay scripting without requiring them to code. Universal Sound Effects, VFX Ultra Bundle. I highly recommend gathering as many audio and visual effects libraries as you possibly can. I cannot stress enough just how useful libraries like these have been during my game dev career so far due to how flexible they are. When you're picking up audio bundles like these, you're usually getting access to raw recordings of sound. It's then available for you to use, remix, repurpose, or whatever in whichever way you want. So I'll regularly blend these source files with others from different libraries to manufacture new sounds. Or more frequently, I'm able to find the perfect sound for when my button is activated or for when my character hits something. Perfect sound is often just sitting there in one of these libraries. Similarly, most visual effects bundles give you access to a ton of different VFX prefabs, which are great in their own right, especially when I'm first prototyping or I'm trying out different ideas and I want to get a feel for visual feedback. But for me, I'm especially interested in VFX packs like this because they'll often give you access to all of the underlying meshes and texture assets. So, much like with the audio, I can then go into the particle system or VFX graph and use these base pieces to build my own unique effects. Having a library of textures and meshes at my disposal saves me so much time. I can build new assets from scratch or remix existing ones to the demands of my projects quickly. My point is, the larger your collection of these kind of asset bundles, the more you'll have to choose from and the more varied and more helpful they'll be in bringing your worlds to life. So I seriously cannot recommend asset bundles like this enough, especially when you're able to get them on sale. It's proven to be invaluable. So those are just a few of the assets available in my curated collection over on the Unity Asset Store. You can check them out as well as some of my other choices using the link in the description down below. A huge thank you to Unity for sponsoring this video and giving me an opportunity to curate and highlight some of my top picks in the store. And an even bigger thanks to so much of you for using my link and picking up anything in the sale as it supports the channel and helps me keep making more videos. Let me know if you end up grabbing anything and feel free to leave some of your own recommendations down in the comments so others can get some great deals and make some great games. If you've enjoyed the video, consider hitting that subscribe button as you'll get to know when new videos from me go live. Or if you'd like to see more from me first, consider checking out one of the videos on screen now. I recently did a long form video with Nels Anderson, who is the game director on Generation Exile. He's been a part of some really interesting games such as Firewatch, Mark of the Ninja, and Death Spank. It was a really interesting conversation. It was great to be able to sit down with him and just talk for so long about stuff and sort of how we ended up getting to Generation XL from there. So be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already. Otherwise, as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.